zero people. Hey everyone, testing, testing. Testing, testing. Can everyone hear me clearly? All right. Hey, Alan. Hey, Bando. Hey, Desmond, nice to see you tuning in again. Uh, Desmond, are you also from Singapore? <laughs> right. Good stuff. Ah, the chat is working. Okay, great, man. Right. Uh, yeah. Try out the chat, guys. Hey, Richie. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, man. Right. I was, I was out for a while um, because I got COVID. Right. It's the worst thing ever. Right. Oh, that's me from Singapore too. That's nice. That's nice. Happened to be in Raffles place. <laughs> okay, guys, when you try to send a message, try to send it to, to everyone instead of host and panelists. So everyone can see each other's messages. I think it's slightly nicer. Right. Um, okay. I heard that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it was Cassandra who did last week's uh, webinar, right? Um, yeah, I was, I was out for co I was out with COVID. Um, Mine lasted nine days, right? Nine days before. Oh, it was Jin. Jin was here last week doing the webinar. All right. It was Jin. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the good thing is that he'll be covering today's live trading session. Uh, rather trading strategy clinic. Um, it'll be a fun session because it's a very different approach. Um, same, same, but different, right? But he has a very heavy emphasis on fundamentals. And I think it brings a very good balance uh, to our very heavy um, technical approach. Right, so um, today's session, uh, I'll be introducing Jean uh, in a bit, right? For those of you guys who were not here last week, right? Um, all right, everyone can hear me clearly, right? Um, I'm just going to show you guys a couple of important links, all right? A couple of important links uh, to take a look at, okay? First and foremost, right, a, I'm going to send it in the chat, right? Please head over to here, techneal.com education slash webinars, right? Um, over here, you know, you can see all the training sessions, right? Next week, we have another, um, we have another session. So you can, you can check it out. Um, wow. Well, uh, is it here? No, I think this is uh, not this one. No, it doesn't show next week one because it's, um, it only shows the next four days, right? So yeah, go. Keep a lookout for here. We have uh, another webinar next week. It'll be a very fun, uh, it'll be a fun session. I think we'll be diving into a little bit more educational Fibonacci retracements. If I'm, if I'm not wrong, it could be Fibonacci retracements. Okay, do check it out over there, right? Um, and also for those of you guys who are wondering how to get, uh, how to get access to the um, uh, to the previous recorded webinars, right? This is the link that um, you guys want to go to. Um, it's a simple. Playlist, right? Uh, playlist it covers everything from price action, right? Stop loss, um, how to improve your stop loss, take profit placements. But it's a recording of all the previous webinars that you guys can tune in. Okay, so yeah, if you want, if if there are some terms that are referring to which you are not familiar with, right? Do jump in, uh, to this link. You can watch all the previous webinars. All right. Now, without further ado, I'm just going to um, uh, start today's webinar. All right. As usual, disclaimer, guys. Uh, remember, everything this webinar is educational in nature, so nothing should be uh, construed as investment or trading advice. Please do your own little due diligence before you guys trade. All right, and and yeah, you know, uh, for today's session, today's session, right? Uh, we have uh, our new speaker, right? Um, those of you guys who were not here last week, introduce you to him. Uh, this week, his name is uh, Jin Dao, right? Um, he's a really really great trader. Um, his approach um, in his tra trading strategy clinic session today, his approach is slightly different from the usual approach that I see me and Kes do. Um, we are very heavy on the technicals. He's very heavy on the fundamentals with a good blend of technicals, right? In this trading strategy clinic, what we do is that um, we open the floor to questions. So if you guys have, um, have questions on trading strategies like Fibonacci, moving average crossovers, support and resistance, candlestick patterns, price action. If you have questions, send it in the chat section, right? Over here, I'm going to send, um, I'm going to send it over here. You can try to send your messages there, right? Um, because we have another screen. We literally have another screen that's open here, monitoring the chat that's coming through, right? So, uh, so if you have questions, please send it through. Otherwise, he'll be sharing um, from his perspective, um, how he breaks down, how he looks at the markets, how he goes through trading view, how he goes through Forex Factory, you know, to look out for trading opportunities, right? If you have requests, 
for certain instruments, maybe it's gold, maybe it's uh, euro dollar, pound dollar. If you have certain instruments you want him to take a look at, also send it in the comment section. He'll do his best to um, take a look at it. All right. Anyway, yeah, this is um, Jindal, newest member in our team, right? He's a really great trader, right? I think he used to manage a couple million dollars, right? Um, live trading, right? Um, consistent performance for the past three years, right? He grew the account really well, right? And he's going to give you a really, really good perspective um, from, um, especially from a very balanced perspective from a fundamental uh, angle on how to take on the markets, okay? Without further ado, I'll be passing the time on to Jin. Remember, if you have questions, take the chance to hammer him with it. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys after this webinar. Hey, Jin, over to you. <coughs> Thank you, Desmond. Yep. All right. Welcome again. Hi, everyone. If you are here, you hear me nice and loud, please give me a big thumbs up. Let me know. Are you ready? Let's go. Put it in the chat. Are we good to go? Hey, how are you doing? All right. <clears throat> so again, remember, please let me know if you've got any questions. Um, let me know how you trade, what you like to look at, any charts you want me to pay attention to in particular. I'll be happy to go through that together with you. Right. So just off the bat, hey, Richie, how are you doing? Right, just off the bat, um, how has your trading been? All right, this week, well, today is Monday, but last week we've seen quite a bit of a choppy price movement. So we've seen the dollar weaken quite strongly. Um, I hope you've been trading well. Have you guys been trading well? <coughs> all right, got first request on gold. <coughs> so, so, all right, so and so, all right. So just to let you know how I usually approach, I had a good trade, good week with gold last week. The performance is good. BTC, yeah, it is. Uh, Bitcoin has jumped up. It has shot up a little bit. I think that's a bit of a retrace right now. We can look to that as well. <coughs> so just to share with you um, how I approach the markets, I look at the markets every day, right? So I'm watching the charts. I'm watching the news every day. Before I do anything, what I always want to do first is to check out the news. I look at what's happening here on Forex Factory. I check out the news. I look. Today has been a little bit quiet in terms of news. Not a lot of things happening. We can't see messages from other people from this meeting. Let me see. <coughs> um, attendees can chat with. All right. Now, hey, John, Daniel, can you try typing something in? So can you guys see this? All right, I hope I fixed uh, the message. Super. Okay, so what I do now, you can see my news here. Can you see the Forex factory here? All right, so what I do is I always check the news. I see what could be in line, what could cause a surprise in the markets, what could push prices towards upside or downside. Today was expected to be quite a quiet session, right? Quite a quiet session, but we've seen a little bit of a surprise just before this webinar here. So I'll tell you why as well. Tomorrow we do, again, not have that much news. We do have tomorrow at 10 p.m. GMT plus eight, <coughs> the US consumer confidence. And you can see it's not looking good for the US it was a 98.7, it's expected a 96.8. So we're expecting a drop in consumer confidence here. And when consumer confidence is low, they're not spending as much. If they're not spending as much, bad news for the US dollar. We could see retail sales number drop, we could see production drop, um, overall economic activity lower for the US. So a bad number here, I think 96.8, we might even see a 95. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a 95 there. We could see further dollar weakness happening here tomorrow night. But I think everything is going to be a bit short term um, leading up to Thursday. Why I say Thursday? <coughs> On Wednesday, we do have the Aussie CPI. That's inflation data quarter on quarter. 
look at it. It's going from a 2.1, expected a 1.9. You might think that that means that inflation in Australia is starting to drop, but the CPI data considers, the CPI quote-unquote data considers a lot of other factors such as oil, such as commodities, such as um, energy prices. So what we actually want to look at is the trim mean CPI quarter on quarter. And in this case, <clears throat> it's still looking at a slight increase from a 1.4 to a 1.5%. So we're still looking at inflation in Australia climbing up slightly. <coughs> the RBA, Governor Low, <clears throat> has actually indicated that inflation in Australia is likely to be at about 7%. And the RBA is or will have to increase rates to tackle this problem of a growing inflation. So we're looking at inflation in Australia still climbing. They're expected to happen already, 7%. Quarter on quarter here, growing likely to grow from a 1.4 to a 1.5%. Why I look at the trimmed mean CPI is because it excludes the volatile 30% of items. It gives you a better view of what inflation is in Australia, and in this case, looking to still grow slightly, okay? But the main focus, the main highlight for the week is on Thursday morning, 2 a.m. GMT plus eight, we have the US federal funds rate decision to be released. Was a 1.75% expected a 2.5%. So they're looking at a 75 basis point increase. Again, a 75 basis point increase. There were rumors or expectations or market sentiment of that the Fed, Federal Reserve might increase rates by 100 basis points. Right? So now at 1.75, they're expecting a 2.5, but some levels of the market we're talking about 100 basis points, so they might be looking at a 2.75% interest rates for the US. At this point, why when we started, or when the market started indicating 100 basis points, we saw the dollar index climb sky high. I'll show you the dollar index here. <coughs> right, the dollar index went all the way towards that 109 level. It shot up to the 109 level on anticipation that we were going to see a 100 basis point increase from the Federal Reserve. <coughs> Sorry about my cough, still there, right? So, but Fed members have came out and said that they're not looking at a seven, at 100 basis point, they're more likely to stay at 75 basis point. And that's what led to the dollar index tracking from 109 all the way back down now to that 106.25 level. But hey, we know that central bank members do say what they think, but sometimes they do surprise the markets. Like what we saw with the ECB, they were talking about a 25 basis point increase. They were talking about 25 basis points and they came out with a 50 basis point increase on last Thursday. <clears throat> so just be careful with that on Thursday morning, we do have the Fed funds rate to be decided, expected 75 basis points. I'm not ruling out the possibility of a 100 basis point increase, or even if they don't raise it by 100 basis points, pay attention to the statement. It could be quite hawkish. They could be saying that, you know, the next meeting, they might think of doing something more aggressive at this point. <coughs> or during the press conference, they might be saying that um, they'll look at increasing rates, maybe continual rate increases um, to push inflation towards the downside, right? At right this point now, inflation for the US is at a 40-year high, if I'm not wrong, right? At 9.1%. So it does need to come back down. <coughs> All right, sorry about that. As I speak, the cough is coming back. Um, with that as well, we do have the GDP number for the US 
it looks like they're going to avoid a recession, a technical recession. What I mean by technical recession is when you have consecutive months of uh, negative GDP data. So in this case, now they're looking at a small increase <clears throat> at that 0.4% was minus 1.6%. So if they avoid that negative number, they're avoiding a technical recession that is actually massively important um, for the US sentiment <clears throat> because you don't want the idea of a technical recession hanging over that's going to cause a lot of uncertainty, a lot of worry on the dollar. Following on from that, on Friday, not much else. Again, not much else um, apart from the Euro CPI data to be released and that's not going to change prices too much. Um, because the euro has already had their rate increase and that big impact on that as well, together with the uh, transmission plan. All right, so <clears throat> with that, we gather a bit of a view of what we can expect for the week. <clears throat> In this case, I'm looking at markets trading a little bit with the trend for today, right? Tomorrow, Tuesday, and on Wednesday. I think Wednesday towards the latest part of the trading session is going to be a little bit quiet um, as we see everyone waiting for the Fed funds rate to be decided. And then on Thursday morning, we're going to see a lot of volatility with the news, possibly some dollar strength coming into play before the rest of the trading session following on with the trend that is developed from that Thursday morning um, news decision. <coughs> So with that, looking at the charts here, um, dollar index on the H4 time frame. So what I'll do is I'll look at everything on the H4 time frame. And if you want me to dive deeper into the H1 or the smaller time frame, I'll do that as well. Uh, dollar index on H4, <clears throat> right now looking like it's trying to test that 0, 1, 0, 0.06.38 or 1.06.40 level, trying to break lower. I think that we're going to see it test lower before bouncing back up again. So it's going to sit around this level. Remember, anticipation is for the dollar to be relatively quiet, trading maybe with the trend a little bit to sit across at this level before possibly breaking towards the upside onto the Thursday news if the FOMC does increase rates by that 75 basis points or if they increase rates by 75 basis points and say that and are quite hawkish with the statement and the press conference. So I'm looking for this to sit right across and then on Thursday, possibly bounce towards upside, towards the 107. I'm not sure whether it'll get to 109 straight away, but I think it'll come back up, test at 107, possibly 108 and sit around that level there. All right, so that's my view on the dollar index. <coughs> anything any other pair i only got one person saying gold if you want me to look at any other pairs please let me know right and if you have any questions about you know your own trading strategy or my trading strategy please ask the question i'll be more than happy to help you through that so with the request let's look at gold first usually i look at gold last but let's look at gold first um, gold <clears throat> what i'll do here just to highlight a point is I look at it on the daily time frame because it's quite important view here. Is that you can see at this point one six at sixteen eighty, right? This sixteen eighty level. Why is it like that? We've seen it bounce on in March twenty twenty one strongly. It came down, hit sixteen eighty, bounced strongly. Again, end of March, hit 1680 and bounced very strongly. <clears throat> in August, hit 1680, <clears throat> just the tail. And then you can see it retrace straight back up and then it stayed within that <clears throat> 1730 level. Again, now we've got 1730 forming that support level there in September. And then now most recently here, <clears throat> we have the gold came down, hit that 1680 level, bounced back strongly, 
now sitting at that 1730 level. So very important to pay attention to that. We've seen this support level hold very strongly over three, now four times already. We've seen that 1730 level form as a good support level, now turning a bit of a resistance. <clears throat> so what I'll be looking for is if price can break higher, if it can break above that 1730 level, I'll have my next level at, let's say 1760, 1770, that was my level there. So at 1770, I'll be looking for price to trade up towards that point. So coming back to the H4 time frame, if we do see the dollar weakness come into play, what we're seeing or what we have seen was that as that dollar weakness came in, we still saw gold dropping. But now after the ECB rates decision, uh, with the dollar still dropping, we've seen now gold pushing towards upside. I'm looking for that break above 1730 for it to possibly trade towards that 1770 level. In terms of a trade idea, what I'll be looking for is if price can break above 17, about 1740. So I'll put about 1740 there. That'd be my, about my entry point. Stop loss will be below. Take profit will be up there. Actually, let me do this in a different way. <clears throat> just so it's easier to see. By the way, um, again, just a reminder, if you are looking at any of the trades or planning to follow any of the trades, use your disclaimer applies. Please do your own analysis. Risk management is all about risk management. Um, I usually, I've traded, I've taught so many people how to trade. And, you know, most traders don't do too badly if they can manage the risk. You don't lose a big deal from bad trades. You lose a big deal from a huge deal from over trading, from over leveraging. Um, so just beware of that. Okay, so 1740, I would say that in this point, take profit at about just below 1770 and then stop loss just below that support level. Now support level. So you're looking at about a one is a two risk reward ratio towards the upside for gold. What we need to do is wait for it to break towards that 1740 level, All right? So um, I hope I answered your question there for... Um, Lunji, sorry, right. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. I hope I answered your question there. <clears throat> um, I've got a question here. I've been dabbling in trading for a couple of years now. I've heard over time, including now, heard about one's trading strategy. Um, I have yet to get one. How does one develop your own trading strategy? Very good question, right? So um, I actually would take on a little bit of a different approach. I would tell everyone that is listening or that I've coached before, I would say that with trading, it's never one size fits all, all right? It's never one size fits all. The way I trade is going to be different from the way you trade. It's going to be different from the way Richie trades uh, because of the time that you spend in front of the screen, the capital that you have, the risk appetite that you might have. Um, it's all going to be different. It's all going to be um, a little bit tuned towards what you prefer. <coughs> so what I would suggest in terms of how to develop, how to develop a trading strategy is one, understand, right? Understand what your target is. If you're looking at 100% in a month, please, 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 that's not going to happen. You know, have a realistic target, look for, you know, set a realistic target and then work backwards. All right, if you set a target, you know how many pips you're going to have to make in a month work it back down to how many trades in a day you're going to have. One to two trades usually is the maximum that you should be getting into in a day. And then from there, you develop the strategy. If it's time, it's dependent on time. If you have not much time, then stay on the H4 on H or the daily time frame. develop a strategy there. If you're looking at the H4 or the daily, then you could... Um, ignore the specific news a little bit. You could just look into 
um, the broader trend um, in, because news in the overall scheme of things on the bigger time frame seldom have that big an impact right it could be just part of that candle movements so you know if you're looking at the daily or the h4 or the h4 time frame then you know uh, look at your i would say do a trend following followed by support resistance those two items just following the trend and support resistance is going to help you massively as the basis for every trading strategy right so i hope um answer your question there then the next part of it is also to back test very hard to get an idea of you know what trading strategy works for you unless you back test and you build confidence every strategy can work every strategy can fail it depends on how confident you are with it if you are super confident with a strategy you know that you're going to enter a trade you're going to hold it to take profit you're not going to panic even if it turns against you a little bit. Um, a lot of times people get off a trade quickly because they're worried that the strategy might be wrong. So build that confidence with your strategy. All right. So I hope I help you there with building a strategy. And if you do have further questions, you know, please feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to guide you through that as well. Um, are we expecting a drop by release of FOMC? <clears throat> All right. So coming back to the dollar index, um, at this point, if the FOMC does a 75 basis point increase and they say that, hey, in the next meetings, we've increased too much, we're going to tune it down, we're only going to do 50 basis points at a max, then we might see a drop, right? If they're dovish, they're going to say that, you know, we're not looking to do further increases or we're going to slow down on further increases on the scale of further increases, then we're going to see a drop in the dollar. But <coughs> I think that, you know, even if it does drop the maximum, or I wouldn't say maximum, the downside, the limited downside could be towards that 105.50. But I think that we could see price bounce um, towards the upside from that point. So <coughs> like that, right? So either we see it bounce off this level towards the upside, or maybe if it breaks a little bit lower, bounce off back above that 106 level towards the 107 or if we see you know a bit of a surprise dollar tracks lower towards 105.50 we could see it turn back up towards that 107 level again all right okay i see a question there as well so i'll get to that shortly um saying that we reach 1770 this is on gold are we expecting a drop by Thursday for oil and gold. <clears throat> All right, so coming back to gold again. I know I'm jumping over the place. I hope that you guys, oh, look, it's happening right now. I hope that you guys are following okay so far. Um, are we expecting a drop on gold? My bias is to short gold at 1770 as well as oil, especially as FOMC will be released. Is that at the right path? Um, Richie, I would say be a little bit careful, right? So. Um, how I approach the markets, I do prefer more of a trend following scenario. So I always approach markets with a bit more of a trend following in the sense that if we do see price move up towards that 1770 level, I would be a bit cautious about trying to sell it towards a downside because we've already seen it climb from 1680 all the way to 1770 quite a good strong upside move i'll be very careful to sell it down from that point um, it depends on your risk profile it depends on how much profits you've had already right if you've been buying it up towards 1770 and then you think that hey can we take a bit of a punt can we try a bit of a counter trend trade a very tight stop loss let's say a very tight stop loss um, that way then maybe right but if not i would say that just be a bit more careful i wouldn't go for a counter trend trade scenario i would in fact um, at 1770 be looking to see if price is going to push towards the upside and whether we can set, buy it up 
when would I be looking to sell gold down? Super conservatively is if it comes back and breaks below that 1731, then I would say that that downward move is continuing. We'll be looking for that move towards 1680, right? <laughs> so I usually give up um, a bit of the move just to be extra cautious so that I don't catch the full, um, a full move towards the downside. Hope that answers your question there, Richie. All right. Just checking, are you guys still seeing my screen okay? I saw a pop-up come up and wasn't sure. Still see, still see the trading view charts okay? Good, good stuff. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I will give it a tight stop loss. Yeah, um, you know, it also depends. Tight stop loss uh, with profit, fantastic. If you're going to be risking um, stop loss on capital, then, you know, I would go for possibly some of the trades. If we do see the dollar strengthen, there'll be a lot of other charts to be trading rather than trying to catch the move on gold as a counter trend move on gold, right? <coughs> Any advice on trying to find a strategy to trade on short time frames? For example, one minute and five minute charts. Right, um, so FH, I would say is that I would normally suggest or advise most traders <clears throat> to stay away. <clears throat> stay away from the one minute and five minute charts. Um, even for myself, I, what I do is I look at charts on her H4 time frame first. Then I look at it. If I can't find any trades on H4, then I'll look at it on H1. If I can't find any trades on H1, I'll look at the M15. And that's the lowest I'll get to unless I'm trading the news, right? So in a non-farm payroll scenario, in a CPI, in an FOMC rates decision at 2 a.m., I'll be trading on a one-minute time frame. <clears throat> but you shouldn't be looking at <clears throat> the one minute on a day-to-day -day basis because if I show you, for example, here, um, pound dollar, right? Pound dollar, take that away. All right, so we had that move down. Now it's pushing towards upside. If you looked at it on the one minute time frame, <clears throat> it's going to look very choppy, right? It's going to look very choppy. It's going to be moving around. Um, in a clear, in a bit of a clearer move, you can see that it's been pushing up. But what could have happened is that if you're looking at it earlier today, <clears throat> with that move towards the downside, you might be tempted. Say 12 o'clock here to 2 o'clock, you might be thinking, hey, it's a big downward move. Can I look to sell it down? You might not have caught this first move. You would have, might have tried selling down to at this point, And then you would have caught a, Bit of, bit of a profit, but overall you would have lost quite a bit um, if you didn't get out in time. So I would say on a day-to-day, -day, H4, H1 in the most M15, if you had to trade on the M1 or M5 time frame, on M1 or M5 charts, then I would say that it's going to be heavily on the price action, right? heavily on the price action. You're going to sit there. You're going to wait for consolidations and break out of consolidations. That's what I would do on the super small time frames. Look for consolidations. Look for the breakout following trend. Make sure if you're looking at small time frames, it has to be trend following because it can get ugly very quickly there. All right. So I hope I'm <clears throat> scaring you all enough um, to warn you on smaller time frames. You make very good profits on the you know H, H4 and H1 timeframes. You probably don't need to go too small there. All right. Um, I'm loving the questions. If you have any other questions, please feel free to let me know. All right. So as we're looking at the pound dollar here right now on the H4 timeframe, pound dollar testing this 1.2050 level. Right, testing that 1.2050. You can see that 8th of July tried to break, tracked lower. Um, on the 19th of July, tried to break, tracked back towards that 
3.30 level. Most recently on Friday, tried to break and it tracked back again. Right now, trying to break. What I think is likely to happen here, we could actually see the pound dollar push <clears throat> towards the upside. I'm not sure whether it will get to that 1.2150 level. Um, why I say that is because there is not a lot of news to be pushing the pound dollar towards that upside, right? There's not a lot of news point pushing the pound dollar towards the upside. That's why I think that we could see this push up, possibly track a little bit higher before turning back down into this range. I'm looking for price to actually stay within this range <coughs> for the next couple of days, right? And possibly if we see that dollar strength come back in, turn, turn back down towards that 1.18 level, All right? So um, question is, can we get a copy of this webinar? It is going to be on uploaded onto YouTube. You can check it out here with the link. I'll put that in again. So make sure you well subscribe. You get the notice of the uploads. You can always check out the videos there, the recordings of all the videos there as well. So that would be my view on the pound dollar. I I will be looking for it to stay within this area, this range of one point two zero five zero and one point one nine four zero, one point one nine five zero, before the news on Thursday morning. We could see it break towards the downside or in the flip scenario, we could see it push significantly higher. I'll be a bit careful. I am more tended or I'd rather see it break lower because you know, we're seeing the pound dollar tracking down. Um, for me to buy it back towards that 1.2150, I could, I would, um, but I'll be more comfortable looking to sell it towards the downside just following that trend. With that, I'm surprised no one has asked about the euro dollar yet. So euro dollar, we had that happen already. It didn't break below that 1.012 level. So that's invalid. Take that away. Right now, pushing towards that 1.0250 level. Why is it pushing up? All right. If I went to the hourly time frame you can see in the last hour or last two hours it actually shot up it wasn't doing too much for the whole of today it was just trading in that tight range and at four o'clock here two hours ago it shot up from this 1.02 level straight up towards 1.0250 reason for that was because you can see here <clears throat> ECB member saying that big interest rates hike may not be over, right? So the ECB on Thursday evening increased rates by 50 basis points. So expected to do 25, it did 50 basis points. Um, right now they're saying that it may not be over. September hike needs to be quite significant. Again, these are all hawkish sentiment coming from one member. And because it's only coming from one member, we see that push hits a resistance level and now it looks to be tracking back down again. So I always look at fundamentals first, but I do consider trend, right? Still trading in a range, in this case, horizontal range. And then I look at my support and my resistance levels, in this case, hitting a resistance and turning back down again. So if I were trading, if I didn't have this session, I would have traded this towards upside, got out at that resistance level, and then look for it to come back down. I might not be selling it back down because with that hawkish sentiment with from the ECB member, you know, no reason for to sell it back down. I'll look for it to come back down, and then I'll look to buy it back up again. Or if it stays within this area, then same thing like the pound dollar, I'll be looking for on Thursday morning, possibly a stronger dollar, US dollar to push it towards the downside. Now, let me ask you all a question. We've got everyone attending here. What do you think is the euro, or do you, what do you think of the chances, high or low,
for the euro to track back down to test the parity level again. I like, I like to keep it a bit interactive. What do you think? Do you think the euro dollar um, is going to have a chance or it's going to be high likelihood or low likelihood to track back down towards that parity level again? What do you think? Looking from you guys for an answer. Higher chance, lower chance, so far we're mixed. <laughs> right, still the war and energy crisis in you. Yep. <clears throat> right, so seems like we're a bit mixed there in terms of you know whether the euro is going to track lower. Two reasons or three reasons there. You, you have it there, Rishi had it there. The war is one uncertainty. All right. Although it seemed, unfortunately, it seems to have um, gone off the headlines a little bit. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate um, because it is quite um, not a good event happening there. But the energy issue, you can see here, Kremlin just released a statement saying that Russia is not interested in complete gas supply cut off to Europe. Despite um, I think last week they were commenting that if the Eurozone does implement a price cap on Russian oil, you know, they would rather turn off the tap, not supply the rest of the world gas if there's a price cap in place. Um, but right now they're saying that, hey, they would rather not turn it off. So energy crisis seems to have taken a bit of a, relief right a bit of a relief you can see here oil prices traded lower through the session traded lower through the session now bouncing back up a little bit but it's traded lower through the session um, um it is the war it is all down to the dollar as well Tonight, uh, well, Thursday night, we're going to see what. Um, are you guys still here? Let me check. Something happened. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you guys lost. I got. I lost everyone for a moment. I am back. Okay. So, just checking. One second. Sorry about that. That was a bit of a... Okay, I am back. So, um, where where did you lose me at? Should I repeat everything I was saying? Or... So, I think that, let's say that after the gas news... Um, okay, so gas news now being less of a bit of a concern, we are seeing the oil prices trade towards the lower zone, right? So I'm gathering my thoughts again. Trade towards the lower zone there. And then with dollar index, right? The FOMC news pushing, we could see, if we do see a stronger dollar, then we're likely to see gold push towards the downside, right? One thing I am paying attention to, and I kind of like seeing in terms of the reaction is how the euro has been struggling, right? It's been struggling here to break above this 1.0250 level. It's been struggling to break higher. Um, even if it does push up and turn back down, we're seeing a rejection of that level. You know, with all that rejection, I think that we could see a push towards the downside. All right. Um, any other pairs to look at? If not, I'll just keep scrolling through the charts. Aussie dollar, right? Approaching a near-term 
resistance level, right? We're approaching a near-term resistance level. The RBA has came out and said that they are looking at increasing rates to slow down inflation. So a bit of a hawkish move on the RBA, a hawkish sentiment from the RBA. I'm looking to see whether the Aussie dollar is going to push above that 6960 resistance. And if it does, could we see further upside? 70 is a bit too near. Uh, well, it's not too near, but you would consider 17050, but it needs to break above 70 as well. So I would say that if we see short term dollar, or we see now dollar weakness, we could see this as a possible trade towards the upside. Uh, just be extra careful. A lot of pairs now. I see your question there, Richie. I'll get to that shortly. Um, a lot of pairs now approaching resistance, key resistance levels. You can see um, the Kiwi as well, all approaching key resistance levels. So just be extra careful. These are all very key points that could cause a big bounce <clears throat> or a breakthrough level. So, you know, I would approach all of these with extra caution. All right. So can you share, please, how you approach your trades with Confluence so that we can have an idea of how you break it down and come up with your entry and exit? <coughs> sure thing. More than happy. All right. So let's use the US yen as, a post, as an example here. Um, what I do, first thing I look at is the news, right? So I look at the um, Bank of Japan Recent data came out, said they're not going to change policy. We're still expecting that yen weakness to come up. Um, with that, you know, we we're expecting the yen to push higher, but because of that dollar weakness, we see the US yen push towards the downside. So straight away, I can tell you that I did not sell the US yen towards the downside because I was trading the other pairs. And also because if I were looking to sell it, down, it will go against my view. I'm looking for yen weakness, so it will go against my view. At this point, then, I would have my support level here at about that 136, uh, where was it, 136 level. Right, I've seen it come down, test this point, and bounce towards the upside. I've seen it come down, hit this point, and looks like it's trying to bounce towards the upside. So what I'll be looking for here is for an upward move on the US yen. I found a support level. I consider support as a range. So between 136 to 136.60, I'm looking for that because it came to this point, hit and turn back down. Found that as a good support level. So what I'll be looking for here is buying opportunities above that 136.60 level. Right? So every time I tell you guys I'm looking at above this point, above that point, price has to go up and close above 136.60 before I'll look, I'll look for a buying opportunity. A resistance level, I know that 139 is a key resistance. Might be a bit too far away because if I did look for a buying opportunity here like that, right, uh, it would fit it worked very nicely, but I don't think that it would move up 200 pips in a hurry. Right? I want to keep my trades short term. Um, I hold my trades for a day, two, three days at the most. Um, unless we see a big US news, I don't think it's going to push strongly towards upside. So that could be one long-term trade idea. Or what I'll be looking at is a buying opportunity about that point again, possibly towards that next level there. <clears throat> and then I'll have that, right? As a bit of a one is to one risk reward ratio towards the upside. So I have one trade idea, which is a one is to one towards the upside or another trade idea, which is a one is to two towards the upside. Um, what you could do is to set up a trade for one is to two and then bear, have that level there right? Have that level there. And then you would say, okay, I'll be looking for this trade to move up. 
And if it does go up and if it does clear above this point, I'll pay attention at this 137.70 level. If it breaks above, great, I'll hold on to the trade. If it hits that point and hesitates and bounces around, I might close it out, reevaluate what happens. If it breaks higher again, then I could look at another trade towards upside. <coughs> I hope that makes sense for you, Richie. <clears throat> so that's how I would approach my trades or a trade setups or multiple trade setups. Uh, can I just copy and paste your trade moves? Um, you could, you could copy and paste trade moves, not as easy as copy and pasting trade moves, but it also depends on, you know, whether you're comfortable with it, you know, how would you like to, you know, what kind of risk you're willing to take on board. It's, it's a bit more complicated, but there are chances for that to happen as well, right? So we'll, we'll see how that develops. I can't promise anything at this point. Um, with that, what else can we look at? Any other pairs that you would like me to look at? You're most welcome there, Richie. Any other pairs to look at? Um, oh, wait, we had someone comment, we had Richie comment about Bitcoin there. <clears throat> right, so Bitcoin, I will look at it on the daily time frame. Previously, what I had for Bitcoin, I had my line at a 23,000 level. I had a line at 23,000 and I said, if it doesn't clear above 23,000 strongly, I wouldn't consider it as a strong bounce or a strong recovery on Bitcoin, right? <coughs> so I had 23,000 and I had, I think this was what we did during the last session as well. And I had 19,000 there. And I said that I was anticipating Bitcoin to continue within this range. Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies used to be inversely correlated or they were expected to be um, a digital asset that was independent from all financial assets. Um, but right now what we're seeing is that the Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies um, are a bit more correlated to how equity markets are moving. So as that... <coughs> As that, as that correlation holds, what we're seeing is that that push higher is due to the S&P 500 moving up. And you can see the S&P 5, S&P has been, S&P 500 has been tracking a little bit lower now, push up, tracking a little bit lower. And that's why we see this tracking a little bit lower towards the downside and also reacting to that resistance area there. So I will be extra careful on um, Bitcoin, not that recovery, not yet in place. I would be thinking that with the uncertainty, with some bad news around the corner uh, or, or no real positive sentiments coming around, we're likely to see this continue within this narrow range or relatively narrow range between 19,000 to 23,000. Um, Desmond, Desmond asking a copy about Desmond's trades. I'm not sure, actually. I would have to, I'll take note of that question and ask Desmond. So we'll, we'll check that out. I'll get him to check that up and then we can let you know if we can set something up like that. All right. No promises, but I'll check with him and we'll see how we can get that going. Thanks for that, though. Really appreciate that. Um, let's look at US Swiss Frank. I was looking at this on the H4 time frame as a rejection towards the downside, rejection towards the downside. I saw that break. We were anticipating this to push up. It did that. It didn't break above that 0 0.9750 level. So I'll take that away. Okay. But it did break lower. Why did it break lower? Again, because of that dollar index. Right now, sitting at 9630, I think that we could see further downside on US Swiss franc, possibly to track lower towards that 90, 0 0.9550 level. So I would say, you know, I'll look for this to come down. What it needs to do is it needs to break below that 96 level. 
before I'll look for selling opportunities towards that 9530 level. <coughs> uh, Richie said, I had two shots for Bitcoin that profited and one long that would have won by a cut it because of FUD. What's FUD? I, I'm terrible with um, abbreviations, fear. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think it's, hey, two shots and one. Oh, fear, certainty, doubt. Okay, fair enough. Um, again, you know, two shots, fantastic. I think it was, it would have been a little bit early. My view is that it would have been a little bit early to get into a long. Um, if you really had to, then, you know, let it come down, try and find a long position at 19,000. Um, maybe at 20,000, you could be looking for some buying opportunity as well, but nothing, nothing right now. I think that if it does break up, it's going to track back in again. Likelihood, right? <clears throat> All right. Uh, I think that's why Edor has become so big. Take milk and crow. I'm pretty sure. So we let's look for that. Uh, well, as again, Desmond, I'll check with Desmond and I'll let you know. We'll he'll let you know. Can you explain maybe some forms of martingale that we should avoid? Well, avoid all forms of not of martingale, right? Um <clears throat> Can Martingo strategy work? Yes, Martingo strategy can work. What do you need for it to work? You need a big account size. You need to be able to hold on to trades. You need to um, not get greedy. So you don't want to enter too many trades. So what it means by Martingo is that, say for example here, as it's dropping, you know, you're buying at a level, you're buying... In this example, this is a quick example here. You're buying at a level here. Um, then you're buying at a level here. And then you're buying at a, at a level at this point again. So why people fail when they use a martingale strategy is because they try and rush into too many trades, right? They try and buy here. They try and buy there. And then maybe again here. And then again, multiple scenarios here. And then um, maybe somewhere there, they end up having too many trades. And then when you have too many trades and if it keeps dropping, the pressure is to keep buying. And it, the size of the trade keeps getting bigger as well, right? The size of the trade keeps getting bigger as well. So can it work? Yes, it can. What do you need? You need to be disciplined. You need to have clear levels on where you'll be looking to buy at, right? You'll be looking at clear levels on when to buy. And also you need to be able to hold on to trades. So that account size needs to be strong enough that you'll be able to hold on to trades. I would not suggest Martingo strategies to, to most people um, just because I know that most people would not be able to hold on to those trades. And you know what usually happens is a position will only reverse when you get margin called, when you've quit, you say, okay, this is not working. It's dropping too much. Then you get off a trade and then it starts bouncing. For example, if you are trying to, you know, sell down or buy up the amount and go on the Euro dollar as it's dropping towards the downside, what will happen is it breaks parity. You think that, oh, it's going to go all the way. You close out all your trades or you run out of uh, margin. Next moment, it shoots back up again. Right, so very dangerous form of um, trading, possible but very dangerous form of trading. Just be extra careful on that. Right, so does that help you there, Richie? All right, so um, if not, what else can we look at? One last quick analysis on the <coughs> where was it? US CAD, okay, US CAD, I wanted to do that one is because um, we saw that move higher. We saw that move higher. It's tested that level. I'm looking for it now to break below that 128.50 level for quick trade, for quick trade towards that 128 level. Um, can it break down from this point? This, I think Richie would be very happy is that in this case, if it breaks lower, we could see that bounce towards the upside. This could be a high um, reward, low, <coughs> a small stop loss 
big take profit setup um, to, for it to bounce back up towards upside. This is for the US CAD on the H4 time frame. All right. So with that, I hope you've found quite a bit of good info there. If you enjoyed the session, give me quick, just let me know in the chat. Did you have a good session? Did it help you? Would it help you? I look for the feedback. If you have any uh, feedback or you know suggestions, please let me know. I'll be happy to take all of that on board. Super. Uh, one last question from Richie was, what percentage of your trade is predictive and reactive or is it purely reactive as you wait for confirmations? Trading, for me, trading is all reactive. Trading is all reactive. Uh, only when I go into investing, then it's predictive. But I, for me, my mantra is I trade what I see, not what I think. So I will trade what I see. So it's all reactive there. Right? Unless I'm making a lot of profits, then I might take one or two predictions. But most of the time, it's all reactive. Super, super. Thank you. What's the best time frame for scalper beginners? Beginners, please don't scalp. That's the best. That's the best suggestion. The best time frame is beginners, please don't scalp. All righty. So I hope you had a good session. Please check out the links that we shared out before. Uh, I hope to see you at the next sessions. And with that, take care, trade safe, trade well. Bye-bye now.